Welcome back. Today we'll be going over how to make a magic system using spells with working mana and displaying it all with using just Minecraft commands. So as always we'll start with a little demonstration. So we have the frosted scepter which you can craft using this kind of recipe over here. And then all you have to do is you'll see it has the mana cost of five and I'll use a blizzard spell. So if we go ahead and summon a villager, a little test dummy, and we just right click, snow particles, some of the blocks get replaced with snow, and we get some slowness. Next up we have a fire spell, and the crafting recipe is as so. And then if we get ourselves another test dummy, if we just go ahead and right click, it'll shoot some flame particles at the ground where he's standing on on fire, lighting him on fire as well. And just like that, hit him again. It'll also deal about 5 damage. And the spells on their own will only go up to certain far before they'll just explode, or they'll go till they hit a block or an entity. Next up we have a teleportation spell. We can craft it using like so. And the same thing, just five mana cost. If you just right click, you'll notice it takes away our blue bars for the mana. And we can just keep teleporting until we run out of mana. And the next example we have is some sort of earth spell where we can either clear an entity or just at the ground. Uh, we need some more mana here. Uh, every time I right click though, it will go ahead and destroy the ground and deal damage uh, to whoever is the nearest entity within five blocks. Next up we have is the air spell. If we go ahead and grab this, and we shoot at our villager. It will go ahead and deal damage and uh, launch him up in the air. Crafted like so. And then we have a little poison spell. Let's go ahead and summon in another villager. Let's go ahead and shoot at him. He'll get poison and take damage, emitting all these spells. The last demonstration we have is kind of like this little evoker fang spell. So we'll go ahead and summon another villager. Right click. We'll summon a bunch of evoker fangs in the direction we're looking. Dealing damage. Now onto our scrolls. These are designed to be one-time use. And you can craft them all like so. Let's grab them all out here. Um, first up, we have the healing scroll. So if we go ahead and uh, take some damage. I just have to right click it. And I am back to full HP. And I've lost one of my scrolls. Uh, these do consume a bit more mana, as displayed here. Then we can use uh, the attack dog spell. So if we go ahead and right click it, it'll summon in a dog. As you can see over here on the right, this is a lifespan cycle. I'll show you how we can set that up so that these dogs don't last forever. Um, as you can see when I summon it, it is my own. Uh, I'm the owner of the dog, and if I summon a zombie or something, it will go ahead and defend it for me. Next up we have the Evoker Fang spell. A bunch of Evoker Fangs. All so the last one we have is the Mana Scroll. So if we go ahead and use our healing one to get some mana, and then we can just go ahead and fill it back up with a Mana Scroll. Now, on to kind of how this will all work. So to start, let's go ahead to our load function. 
for all of our ray casts, we just need to use a scoreboard called steps uh, to count out how far we want them to go. For lifespan for the dogs, we're going to want to have a lifespan dummy score. For all the mana, for what I want the mana costs, we're going to get a bunch of these uh, numbers just to compare it to. And then we want to add everyone to mana, and we'll just give them 20. And we'll add the mana scoreboard. And then we're also going to be running a mana regen um, thing over here. So if we go over to mana regen, all we're doing is making sure that we're not full on mana. And if we're not full, then we're going to give ourselves one mana. And then this will repeat every one second. So every second, we'll gain one mana. Also, every one second, if someone has a lifespan of one or more, this will remove it. And once they reach zero, they die. So this will be important for like any entities we want to summon temporarily, uh, keeping track of them all individually. We just use this lifespan cycle. Inside of the tick is how we display our um, the mana bar. The mana bar is developed by another YouTuber, Cloudwolf. I just use all of his code. I will link his video in the description. Uh, he'll kind of explain of how it all works. Uh, it's essentially just a title screen with a resource pack combined to uh, make that cool thing that we see before us. And then we just need to make sure that we're displaying it at all times, checking to see what our mana scoreboard is. Uh, to start, we definitely need an advancement to check to see if our item, if we're right clicking the item. So for our right click detection, we're using the food. So for our first staff, it was the blizzard spell. We just want to make sure that it's taking about 100,000 seconds to eat. And since that's the only item in the game that's going to do that, this will be unique to that item. Upon doing so, we're going to go over to our Ray 1 mana check. This will just see if we have at least 5 mana, and if we do, we'll cast it. If not, we'll get rid of our advancement so we can right click again. Upon getting, uh, if we do have the 5 mana, we'll go ahead and cast. And so we're going to remove our mana, and then we want to just summon an entity that we're going to be using for our Ray cast. And then we are going to be making sure that we're not going to be affecting our caster so that our raycast will hit an entity that isn't us. And then this will just kind of set it up so that it will be facing the direction you are when it moves. And then we go over to process. This is where our steps come in. We can change this for how far we want our spell to go. Once we process it, we're now going to move. And whenever we move, we're just going to be teleporting half a block forward. Um, for visualization, we're having a particle for each step. It's not necessary. And then this is how we check for collision within entities. Uh, assuming it's not the caster, and then we're within one and a half blocks from our uh, area effect cloud, and that they are one of our targets. The targets is just a tag grouping of people that we're looking at. Um, which I already made a list of all the entities that I want to target um, from the custom enchantments. So I'm just putting them in with all my targets. Then we're going to go ahead and give ourselves a tag that we hit the target so that when we go ahead and finish our moving, we go back to process. And if we have hit a target, then we can run our hit function. I ended up deciding that if it hits a target or a block, or if it runs out of steps, it'll all go to hit. But you can just have it so it has to hit a target for it to have the hit, or it has to hit a block for it to go hit, or it has to re like max out its area, which probably wouldn't just do this one. And then you want to kill the ray. Once we hit something, this is where we can change it up. The rest will all be pretty similar for the rest of the rays. It's the hit function that's typically different. This is where we can go ahead and give our entity slowness that we hit. Uh, this is how we get the snow effect. We're just filling in a 3x3x3 three by three by three area. And then we're damaging the nearest entity. Um, we're going to get a bunch of snowflake particles. 
a little play sound for the totem use. And then we want to remove caster. Uh, the reason why we want to remove our caster is so that in multiplayer, if another person hits you, you will no longer have the caster tag, so you won't be immune to their ray cast. And then for crafting, um, we'll go back and demonstrate one of the crafting facilities that looks really small. As you can see, if we were to craft the item, it shows up just like that. Um, so if we go over to our crafting area, once we get our grid, we just put in the items we want to put in for our recipe. And then our result, we're just looking at having a custom name and then the different text. We do this for a little spacing in between the name and then the description of the spell and the mana cost down there. And then we want to go ahead and put in our food attributes so we can detect the right clicking in the future. So that's for the wands. The scrolls are very, very similar. Again, we're detecting a right click, so we'll look at the heal spell. So assuming it has the food conditions, we're gonna go over to our scrolls and we're gonna look for our heal. Same thing with the mana check. If they have that mana, we'll go through it. And then we just remove our mana, reset the advancement. We want to get rid of the paper in our hand to consume the item, give our effect, and then any cosmetics we want to add to it. And that'll be all.